Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. It's your boy Fat Crypto, and today I'm doing another crypto market update. I've been bring, I've been on fire with the crypto market updates lately, and I I think it's very necessary during times like this, uh, when there's a lot of fear in the market, a lot of you guys are worried, and uh, just give you an update of what I think's going on, some news, and also some technical analysis on the Bitcoin charts. Uh, obviously, Bitcoin is pretty much defining how all the coins perform at the moment. And it's looking good today, I can't lie. If you are new to my channel, I do coin overviews, technical analysis, crypto market updates, trading series, basically trying to be your one-stop shop for crypto information. I'd like to point out a couple things before we get started. Number one, I am not a financial advisor. None of what I say or do is financial advice. Please do your own research before investing in any of the cryptocurrencies that I talk about. Number two, if you are interested in buying some cryptocurrency, feel free to use my Binance link down below. By using that link, you'll be able to get 10% of the commission that Binance take off each of your trades given back to you, as well as giving 10% to me. A win-win if you ask me. Finally, if you do have a 1440p display, be sure to check my video out in 1440p. How many of the crypto YouTubers do you know putting out crypto vids in 1440p, eh? I know you probably don't care, but uh, you know it's there if you want it. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into the video. So, the market is recovering right now, okay? Uh, I'm going to go into the technical analysis right at the end, so stay tuned for that. Um, but we can see Bitcoin's up 10%, Ethereum up 23%, Binance Coin down up 30%, Cardano up 24%, Doge up 11%. Everything's up today. Everything's really, really going up. 36% for Uniswap. This is the thing. So when Bitcoin goes down, these altcoins suffer harder. And then when Bitcoin starts recovering, these altcoins really start exploding. Let's take a look at what's uh, been the biggest movers in the last 24 hours. 65% for MakerDAO, and I've been highlighting the significance of Maker, Aave, Compound. Um, these DeFi protocols are going to be huge, in my opinion. Uh, Polygon Matic up 65% in the last 24 hours. You, you guys already know how much I've been talking about Matic. I spoke about it before, this crazy breakout, and it's been doing some crazy crazy things i mentioned pancake swap yesterday it's up 45 percent today looking very nice harmony one you guys know how bullish i am on harmony one i did a coin overview a couple days ago if you want to watch that out uh, check that out be sure to check it out i'll leave a banner just above my head uh, up 43 percent today sushi swap up 37 percent engine up 37 percent i've been banging on about cosmos for god knows how long nice to see it's up 40 percent today uh, bakery token up 45%, Swissborg, another big, uh, big yield platform that I'm very, very bullish on, up 38% today. Aave, I've already, you know, Aave, Maker, Compound, these DeFi protocols are going to be huge for the future. 33% today, VeChain up 32%, Chainlink up 31%, Compound up 31%. Everything is recovering with Bitcoin's recovery. The question is, will it last, right? And that's largely, I'll, I'll get into the char charts at the end, but that's largely down to Bitcoin, right? <laughs> if Bitcoin starts dumping again, then we're going to see some big, big problems. Uh, well, certainly the stable coins with slight uh, uh, decreases, everything's pretty much going up today. So let's not talk about the decreases. Let's go straight into the crypto news. So the first bit of news I got. Crypto market volatility peaks as Bitcoin and altcoins seek to recover. As crypto price volatility rises, some are hopeful the market will revert to the upward path, which will flush out any weak hands, right? And this is what I've been pointing out. It's important for the market to flush out these weak hands because the weak hands, they don't know what they're investing in. They don't know what they're doing. They come in expecting, and it's normally the weak hands that come in ex like as though cryptocurrency owes them something, right? And I, I hate this mentality. I've mentioned this in my some of my other videos, this mentality where people are entering the crypto space like cryptocurrency owes them something. If something hasn't gone up in the last 10, 15 days, they throw all their tr toys out the pram. It's like, what is going on? This is a rubbish coin. No, I don't. And people forget investing isn't about the short term gains. Investing is about building wealth in the long term, right? And a lot of the weak hands, a lot of the uneducated investors that are entering the crypto space, they're coming in expecting to be millionaires the next day, which is super, super toxic, not good for the mental, um, the market at all. These weak hands either need to be shaken out or they need to be educated, in my opinion, for the market to mature as a whole, right? Because at the end of the day, it's the educated investors that 
hold the fundamentally strong projects, right? They know when to buy back in when it dips, holding those projects afloat. That's what is key. That's what the market, so when Bitcoin drops to a certain level, you know, everyone who is educated has this long-term vision that Bitcoin could each a uh, million dollars. I, I, put, uh, I showed you an article a couple of days ago where the valuation of Bitcoin, you know, there was a, uh, due to the scarcity, uh, a, a valuation of a hundred million at some point in the future, right? And a lot of the educated investors, they know this, so they're buying in, in the dips. The people who don't know what's going on, they're buying the tops, they're selling the bottoms, right? And that's what usually causes this bear market, this huge amount of retail FOMO who enter the market and then they see a huge crash and they start selling the bottoms and they keep driving the price down and then the bear market ensues, right? It's just things to consider. As the market matures, we want stronger hands. We want more educated investors. I think that is the key forward. The crypto market bloodbath that is currently engulfing the entire industry will likely go down in history as one of the key points to remember regardless of whether the prices recover or continue going downwards. Now, I'm a bit, I don't know if I 100% agree with this, right? I, at the end of the day, if we start moving upwards, for me, this is just another correction, right? Um, if you uh, check out my video that I've just posted before where I compare this correction with some of the other corrections, you know, we've had some more substantial corrections in Bitcoin before and the altcoins. You know, at the end of the day, whether, you know, it could be something, a, 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 a key point, primarily due to the fact that it was caused by some tweets and some FUD. But, you know, I, I wouldn't say 100% this is this is going to be a key, key point to remember. I feel like a lot of people, if Bitcoin goes to 100, 150K, 200K plus, I think this will just be another correction. <laughs> but, you know, we'll see each their own, really. Um, so, you know, the bad news was called, the, the, the market correction was largely caused by Tesla CEO Elon Musk and the Chinese government who threw spanners into the works of crypto miners sending Bitcoin all the way down to $30,000, right? And I mentioned this in my, some of the other videos. I think this is why I don't think the bear market has begun and because because the, the, the China news, we've heard this time and time and again. A couple tweets, surely a couple tweets and the, the, the China FUD that we hear time and time and again can't be the, the things that start the bear market in my opinion, right? Uh, the cryptocurrency market cap, the total market cap dipped from $2.5 trillion to just $1.5 trillion since May. Over 60% decrease. That is insane. Galaxy Digital founder Mike Novogratz stated that as Bitcoin continues to face a high degree of volatility, thereby discovering its bottom in the process, it seems as though it will take this yet evolving market a fair amount of time to consolidate and stabilize. That's what's important is it needs to stabilize right now, right? It needs to find a solid bottom, which it can it can rely on as support. It's seeming like 30K could be that bottom, right? Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. We could go below. But once we establish a key level of support, Bitcoin can now move forward, move upwards, and then therefore the altcoins can follow. If we can't find that key bottom where there is a lot of buying pressure, then it will be problematic for the entire crypto space as a whole, right? Crypto Prime broker Genesis Global Trading noted that recently many major Bitcoin sell-offs were witnessed thanks in large part to forced liquidations and leverage closeouts, right? So people leveraging, it really does have an effect on Bitcoin price, right? If too many people long a, a position, you know, they're, they're trading with leverage. So that's as though there's so much more. And then when they get liquidated, that's a huge amount that just gets sapped out from Bitcoin causing more drastic price crashes, right? The same works the opposite direction. If there's a lot of people shorting and then they all get liquidated, the price will drastically increase, right? So crypto stocks solve volatility issue, Goldman Sachs analyst says, right? Coinbase stock is the best way for investors to gain exposure to the crypto industry and avoid volatility, according to Goldman Sachs analysts, right? Interesting, the fact that Goldman Sachs analysts are uh, effectively promoting the Coinbase stock as a hedge against the volatility present in cryptocurrency, right? Goldman Sachs has initiated coverage of United States cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase with a buy rating following a major crash on crypto markets. Best way for investors to gain exposure to the cryptocurrency industry, CNBC reports. According to the report, shares of crypto companies like Coinbase should be regarded as a hedge against the parabolic volatility of cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. 
think it's very nice to see that Goldman Sachs analysts set a 12-month price target of $306, implying a share price increase of 36%. However, it's important to note that Coinbase's longer-term fate will depend on the continued success or failure of cryptocurrencies in an asset class the client note reportedly reads, right? So, Goldman Sachs, you know, in, eff in effectively promoting cryptocurrency, and if you if you're for those investors worried about the volatility, they're saying invest in the Coinbase stock, right? It's a hedge against the volatility of cryptocurrency, whilst you know reaping the benefits as cryptocurrency evolves and becomes bigger. Nice to see. Uh, next, Uganda's finance watchdogs calls for crypto regulations in the country. With exchanges slow to fall under Financial Intelligence Authority oversight, Uganda's AML watchdog wants the government to make a move on crypto regulations, right? Uganda's Financial Intelligence Authority wants the government to come up with a clear-cut crypto regulation, right? A lot of people might look at this as FUD. I don't think so, right? There's nothing wrong with having clear-cut regulations, right? Everything should be regulated fairly, but it should be regulated, right? If things are not going wrong, things are being exploited, yes, that should be dealt with, right? So not a bad thing at all, in my opinion. Um, you know, the FIA has asked the country's finance minister to develop a legal framework for cryptocurrency regulations in Uganda. The FIA director revealed the, that several VASPs continue to operate illegally with only a few platforms electing to register with the AML watchdog. A VASP is a virtual asset provider, right? Apart from money laundering risks, Asubo identified investment scams as another risk of current lack of crypto regulations in Uganda. As previously reported by Cointelegraph, fraudsters have leveraged the current cryptocurrency po popularity to siphon money from unsuspecting victims by elaborate virtual currency investment scams in Uganda, right? So this is what I mean. So there's a lot of people trying to exploit, you know, the cryptocurrency boom and just exploit others through cryptocurrency, right? There's loads of scammers. There's scammers in my comments, right? They're everywhere. They're not nice people. And what they're doing is awful. These regulations will help control that. It's a good thing to see. Now, I mentioned the pancake swap flash loan attack not too long ago. Binance Smart Chain, and I did mention, guys, be careful when you're investing in Binance Smart Chain projects. It's very early days. I mean, cryptocurrency as a whole is very early days. It's got a lot of maturing to do. It's got a lot of advancing to do. And I mentioned these sort of things happen on the Binance Smart Chain a lot and also other projects, right? Uh, there's rug pools. There's all sorts of things that are going on. But with the drastic growth in the Binance Smart Chain, it has become a fundamental area of you know, attack for rug pulls, all these scammers, all these flash loan attacks, and we've seen another one. Funds are safe, bodged finance assured after the exploit, but Binance Smart Chain's decentralized finance ecosystem saw a second flash loan exploit in a week after Pancake Bunny. A new attack drained $3 million or half the total liquidity from DeFi platform Bodged Finance, right? The developer team identified and mitigated the exploit within 45 seconds. Very quick, very quick to act. Or 15 blocks thanks to an online meeting held when the attack started. Still, the culprit was able to drain $3 million of the $6 million of liquidity. The bodge token price crashed from $1.8 to 0.0003% following the attack. I'd like to apologize. I'm so sorry for those uh, who were invested in Bodge Finance. This is not nice to see. It's awful, awful, awful things, right? And it's awful that people do this in this space, but they do. And you just need to be careful. Um, there's not much you can really do here, is there? Like you invest in a project because you see the the potential, you see the, the, like the fundamentals, what it could be. And when stuff like this happens, it can be very demoralizing, very not nice at all. And this is why I tell people to diversify their portfolio. Make sure you're not in, you're not going gung ho all in into one project and dollar cost average layer into the projects that you're investing in. Right? Don't if you have a thousand dollars, don't go all a thousand all in one go into one project. Right? You split that investment up into maybe three, four, five. 
If you plan on investing in one project, layer in five or find five or six different projects that you layer into, right? That's how I operate and that's how I recommend other people to operate in order to maximize their gains and mitigate their risk. Now, finally, let's take a look at Bitcoin, right? The Bitcoin chart. Now, um, I've highlighted the significance of this green line, right? Very, very major area of support. And I was saying I don't want to see us close a candle below this line. And as you can see, that's what we've done. We have found some solid support between $34,000 and $35,760, right? We can see I haven't changed any resistance or buy zones, but this is where we have found support. And I did mention in one of my earlier videos, if we do end up closing a candle below here, we could start seeing maybe something like this, or we could start going between 30 and 35,000, right? Provided 30,000 hold strong as support. Right now, this region between 34 and 35.7 is holding very strong as support. If we can close this very quickly, flip this and close this candle above, fantastic. But right now, because of how strong of the support this was, I would expect it to be a strong resistance. But you know, with this breakout, if the volume really starts increasing, we could start seeing some very positive price action, right? Taking a look at the four hours, I found it interesting to note we are slightly breaking out, right? Uh, we can see how we were basically trade this, this line here is a very, very substantial resistance, right? You can see how we've been rejected off it one, two, three, four times, five, right? And we are breaking out of this resistance. So potentially we could break out. If we can close this candle above, start using this as support. If we get rejected here, we may come down to retest this resistance as a support before starting to move up. I did highlight that we, I didn't want to see this weekly candle close below the 21 week EMA. Uh, just to save me some stress, but we have uh, the significance of this being, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, we've only closed one candle, a weekly candle below the 21 week EMA uh, in any bull cycle, right? Since 2013. Uh, we have closed this below. It's not the end of the world. What I would like to see is, I mean, we are currently here at the moment. We're seeing some gains. I'd like to see us close this daily above this green line again. Then we can flip this 200-day simple moving average, and then we can move up from there. However, one thing to note is that the 10-day simple moving average is, you know, we, we haven't fully got the confirmation yet, but it's starting to cross the 200 day simple moving average and when a longer time frame crosses below when a shorter time frame crosses below a longer time frame it's usually not a good sign we can see the rsi is moving back up from uh oversold we can hopefully start seeing some positive price action here but like i said this is going to be in my opinion a substantial resistance if we can flip it very quickly fantastic and start going for that 200 day but I think a more likely scenario, in my opinion, is maybe get rejected here and start bouncing, establishing support here. If the support can hold, fantastic. We can go to flip this uh, resistance yet again and make it a support. If this support doesn't hold, then we may come down to 30,000 again to start establishing support yet again. But I think things, although we have closed this below, I mean, things are looking better for cryptocurrency as a whole. The People have established that these terrible technicals are largely due to the FUD and the tweets and, you know, just the s silliness that was going on. So hopefully we have bottomed out. I'd like to think we have bottomed out. Uh, if we can't hold support here, then obviously we're coming back down again. But 30,000 has established itself as a very strong support. So I would expect this support to hold. But yeah. That was just a quick crypto market update. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. If you didn't, do dislike the video. Let me know why you dislike the video so I can actively improve. But yeah, it's been your boy Fat Crypto, and I will see you in the next video.